How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today we're taking the super to Cars and Coffee. One I haven't been to but I've heard good things. We're going with my boy Eric and his GT3 so I'm running late already. I was going to take the McLaren today but it wasn't washed so I decided to drive and get the Supra, which I know doesn't make sense, but I also need to get a smog done on my McLaren, so I didn't want to risk it with police. Anyways, we're running late. I'm gonna check the oil, and then we're gonna leave. Get some quick turbo noises real quick. I know you guys haven't heard this car in a while. I'm not gonna get on it too crazy because there's a little traffic, but. All right guys, we just pulled up. It is filling in real quick. We've never been here, and so far it looks really tasteful. A lot of, a lot of nice cars, not like a usual SoCal car meet. So, should be just nothing but good cars, but we'll walk around, we'll try to find some questionable cars, <laughs> but should be fun, should be overall really good. I mean, there's a lot of Porsches, a lot of everything. Uh, I see some supercars, some Lambos, some Ferraris, so we'll go walk around right now. See, this is what I'm talking about, okay? You know it's gonna be a good meet when the first thing you see is a bunch of German cars when you pull up. I'm not a huge German car enthusiast, but I love myself a good Porsche GT3. Whew. BBS wheels, which seems to be the move on like 99% of Porsches. One of them is fucking loud as hell over there. Sounds so good. Like I've always told myself if I ever sell the McLaren, I wanna buy a GT3. I obviously can't afford a GT2, and I can maybe barely afford a GT3, but I mean, <laughs> straight line performance, I, you just can't really beat the McLaren, so it's just such a hard thing to do, but I think I'm kind of getting tired of this whole straight line stuff, so I could see myself cruising around in something like this. I prefer this generation. The new one looks a little bit too Robocop for me. I mean, it just it looks cool. Oh God, it just sounds so crisp. It, it just looks a little too Robocop for me. I like it. Like, I mean, would I drive it? Yeah, but that, oh, just so perfect. I've been saying I need a parts car, but I don't know what kind of parts I'd be able to fit in here. A couple jugs of oil, maybe a couple tires. I wonder what the mileage is on something like this. Like, is this thing super practical or is it super impractical? Does this thing get like 50 MPG or like 20 and it's just small? <laughs> I just want to hear his exhaust as the guy that's been driving around. Here we go, we have an RUF 911, probably looking at a 200-ish thousand dollar 911, just because of all the RUF stuff that's been done to it. I mean, I I just, I've, you're, you're ballsy. You're ballsy driving this thing out here, man. This thing is, is crazy. I love the paint. This color is just absolutely beautiful. It almost reminds me of the paint on my Mustang. It just has a slightly green undertone instead of the uh, purple undertone that my Mustang has. But we got RUF all the way through it. I mean, dude, the calipers alone on this thing, just worth money. The wheels, calipers, all the little RUF stuff on it, money right here. This Porsche meet got me one in a Porsche. See, like at any other SoCal car meet, if I just record and walk, like you'll just see shit boxes. There's no shit boxes here. Oh God, look at this bad boy right here. Oh my God, let's just take a walk around it. God, three piece wheels. I personally like this Carrera body style more just because of the the wideness of it. The, the, I mean, it's a little bit over the top. You know, if you're in 911s, typically you like the more subtle look like this. But I mean, dude, the thickness, the wing, everything about this, like it almost has that like JDM styling around it. It's just clean. Now I normally wouldn't record Volvo and stuff, but the Saab three piece, or not three piece, three spoke wheels, they just, I don't know, they do it justice. I mean, it looks pretty clean. I mean, yeah, you're driving around in a hearse, but it's a clean hearse. Here's the front end of that Volvo. I mean, I'm sure someone wanted to see it. It's clean. It's just a Volvo though. Right when I was pulling up, this Evo was pulling up and it sounded mean. I wish I could have got it on camera, but I was parking. Sheepy race intercooler. I'm sure there's some other sheepy stuff underneath. Definitely sounds quick. We have our AAA R's all the way around. It's a nice looking Evo. It's OEM plus, but it's perfect OEM. Another Mark IV, I saw him pull in with his super polished Workmeisters right there. 
He has the bumper that I'm debating on getting. Uh, I forget the name of it, but I like it because it has a slightly bigger opening for more air, obviously, near the intercooler. His paint's ab absolutely clean. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of black cars just because they show swirls and all little imperfections super easily, but the black on his looks really nice, and it's wingless. What do you guys think about the wingless, the wingless look? Do you guys like the wingless look? I think it's clean, but it just looks like it's missing something, in my own opinion. Also looks like he's got some air ride but not super slammed and not super aired out. The one thing I will say is I don't see an intercooler. So that's the only thing this thing is missing is it looks like a turbo. It's got the Premier Edition badging in there. Five speed W58. It's clean. I just, it needs to be turboed. I know someone's going to call me out on it. So I have to show it. GT3 RS parked right next to it. The wheels, big center lock, three piece wheels. I mean, God, man, just like, you know, the cost of a house in some states, but you know, confined to 16 by six. Yeah, let that sink in. And like they say, you could sleep in a car, but you can't race a house. I'll race this house. Yes, I'll be the only guy to walk out of the meet to go and record this OEM Mark III right here. Absolutely mint. <clears throat> I saw him pull in. Sadly, he didn't park in there. I don't know if there was room. But this has to be one of the nicest looking Mark 3s I think I've ever seen. Like by now, they're all ran through like a hooker. They've been beat to hell like my meat. And this one is just perfect. I know I keep saying perfect a lot in this video, but I mean, look at the meat we're at. The, the meat is perfect. Personally, I like Mark 3s. I think that if you want a Supra and you don't want to spend, you know, your fucking college fund on one, this is perfect. I would get this personally over an SC300. That's just me. I like the 80 styling a little bit more than the SC300 styling. But uh, I guess that's all just personal opinion at that point. I think this is the smallest car here. And there's MR2s here. This thing is absolutely tiny. Here we got hood pins. We got racing harnesses. We have nice period correct like Recaros in there. The, the fabric in there su looks super period correct too. I mean, I don't think it is. I think it's definitely been reupholstered, but this is a nice little BMW. I wonder what the output on this is or if it's got a crazy swap or something just because obviously from factory, this thing's probably making, what, 70 wheel? So if that, if that, I, I don't even think that, honestly. 70 crank is probably more accurate. And even then, I think that's a high number, but this thing probably gets down. He's probably reading all the suspension and the brakes and stuff. This thing probably skedaddles around the track i think we have two of the best bmws ever made right here the e92 m3 both rocking bbs wheels it's such a perfect look it's such a, a a timeless look i mean the e92 came out over a decade ago and it still looks good as new like this still looks like a new bmw some of if not the best sounding v8s ever there's just there's just not much that can outperform and out sound the sound of an E92 M3. At least not stock, obviously. Nowadays, these things are a little dated, but overall, I mean, I'd, I'd still drive these shits around. I want to hear how this one sounds, though. Hopefully, I'm here when he leaves, because whatever exhaust he has, it looks pretty fucking gnarly. I can just imagine all the piping underneath. It, it's probably some nice shit. I mean, this car looks very tasteful on both of them, but if I had to pick out of the two, I'm choosing this one. All right, so that was just the parking lot of the car meet. I got into the actual shop itself, and there were some gnarly builds in here, like this boosted K-Series Honda Fit. I mean, giant turbo, everything polished out, absolutely insane. It really got me motivated to finish my Civic. Some more parts are on the way, and uh, I'll be updating you guys on that very shortly. But this, <laughs> this thing was really surprising. Not many Honda Civics like this are uh, built to this extent. Also saw this pair of Porsches. We got the younger and the older brother right here, both of them that olive green. This 1964 Porsche was just immaculate. I, it's just amazing how I think Porsche is one of those car manufacturers where any generation just looks good. I mean, seeing these two side by side, it, it, like they've just stayed true to their styling and just you could instantly tell what's a Porsche. I also like the package that this one had. The seats and everything were just money. I wish I got more footage of those, but this Super right here was really clean. Now, I forgot what company it was a magazine cover for, but this was an old built Supra that was, you know, some sort of magazine uh, car, but super clean. The charge piping was a little funky. Uh, I wish, again, I got some footage of that, but the charge piping, like, right out of the turbo went 
like backwards at like a huge slant. It was really weird looking, but the car itself was absolutely mint. Uh, it's probably not much of a driver. It's probably a lot more of just a parker. But I mean, at the end of the day, you got a clean super like this. I don't blame you for not driving out on California roads. Now, this is what a driver looks like. EK hatch, nice slam to the floor. We have spoon all over it. Interior, absolutely gutted. No extra weight needed. No tint either, which was surprising because... Uh, this thing looks like it's just begging to get stolen. I'm sure he doesn't drive it out and park it anywhere sketch, but if he did, he wouldn't own it anymore because that's California for you. Underneath the hood, I'm not sure what it had, but I would bet a case swap. I'd bet I'd bet a couple bucks on a case swap. His friend right here had a case swap in his, and he has some Volk Racing T37s with some very close clearance on the brakes right there. Right hand drive, although I don't think it's an imported one because the VIN was still on the left hand side. You can see he's got ITBs underneath the hood. Nice functional hood as well. I need a hood like that on my Civic. Uh, that'll probably be ordered once I get my shit dynoed and everything. Interior all ready to race. We got a little roll cage. We got harnesses. We have racing seats. Overall, just a clean EK. Then we have something straight out of Forza right here. I've never seen an off-road Porsche, but this one is ready to go. It's skid plate and all, big fog lights up front, big off-road wheels. I'm curious how this thing actually drives, and I'm curious what motor is powering it because I, just, I can't imagine with all the added weight that it's too fast, but I'm sure this thing is a blast off-road. Up next, we had a slammed R32. I'm pretty sure it's bagged because I can't imagine you driving around like that hashtag no balls anyways uh <laughs> that being said it was a pretty clean example of an r32 uh, no bacon fenders here which was nice to see uh, like you don't see too many of these eggs looking as clean as this one did at least not anymore and i hate eggs this mark 5 supra is ready for the track with its mag blue advance the interior he's got a roll cage racing seats harnesses quick disconnect wheel it's again ready for the track this guy is, is setting some fucking lap times fitman was absolutely perfect and it's just, I'm just, I want one so bad. I'm just, I'm just, mm, I want one. I just, I want to open my garage and see a Mark V and a Mark IV. If that means I got to get rid of the McLaren, that means I got to get rid of the McLaren. I'm sorry. Anyways, the last car of the meet was this Honda Civic Type R with a lip on top of a lip. I wasn't a fan of everything he did to this car, but I did like a lot of the things. His front end was really aggressive. I really like his hood and um, his, <laughs> his, his, his carbon fiber weather guards is kind of a flex. Uh, not sure if I would get that, but it, it is kind of a flex. He also has some work wheels, and they're very nice as well. They fit the build. Wrap, I honestly liked. I wasn't a huge hater on the wrap. I actually, I actually thought the color was pretty sleek. My biggest complaint would be the lip on top of a lip. That just, that just looks funky to me, but hey, it's not my car. I did like his mesh grill, though. Super clean. Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this video. I didn't film an outro. I went home and knocked out. Uh, these meets are great because they're so early that all of the unemployed hooligans don't show up to them so that's great i think that's why these are these are nice that being said uh my sleep schedule gets destroyed by them because i'm not used to waking up early either so i'm not in any better water talking shit about them so whatever anyways this meet was sick i need to go to more of these hopefully you guys did enjoy this video california car scene isn't as bad as it seems not if you go to the right meets anyways subscribe and until next video peace